Hi guys, I'm Kier and welcome back to my studio. Today we are testing out Arteza's Everblend markers. Now as you know, I am an Arteza affiliate, but I purchased these markers with my own money, so this is going to be a completely honest review. I will say, however, if you like what you see and you would like to try these markers for yourself, then feel free to use my coupon code KIERSTUDIO1 for 10% off. All right, we are going to start things out with a swatch test. I'm a big advocate of swatching all new art supplies because you just never know what the color will look like once you use it and you have to see if it will dry lighter or darker. Sometimes the color will even vary depending on the paper you use, so I definitely suggest testing it out on a separate piece of paper beforehand. You know, don't just jump straight on, but this is a free country and you can do as you wish. This is just what I suggest. This set includes 60 alcohol-based markers, and this case for a total of $70, which I know, I know, sounds expensive, but if you get out your handy-dandy calculator, we can do the math, and each marker turns out to be about $1.17 each. You compare that to Copics, one of the most known brand of alcohol markers, which are usually something around $4.17 per markers. Copics are basically four times more expensive. That breakdown even included the case that comes with these markers. I've been working with alcohol-based markers for a long time now, and I can tell you that most of them are about $2 per marker once you do the math because most comes in a set even though some brands you can buy just one particular marker, if you so fancy. So I can tell you that this price is not a bad price at all. This is one of their bigger sets. So if the $70 price tag scares you, which of course I would understand because that is a large investment, especially if you're not used to alcohol-based markers, they do have smaller sets for a more cost-effective price, if you will. So yeah, you can go ahead and check that out if you want. With alcohol markers, I do not like to go too cheap because the cheaper ones I noticed are typically harder to blend with. And I mean, that's why I get alcohol markers to begin with because they blend so nicely if you get good quality. And these are a really good quality. I was actually pretty surprised. And like I said, this set in particular actually comes with this handy dandy case, as you can see here in the bottom right corner. I like this case a lot because you can actually take out the center of it if you want to carry around something smaller with your most used markers in it. That's what I did. I rearranged all the markers basically by the ones that I like to use a lot and now I can just take them out and go on the go. The case also has pockets, so you can carry more than just the markers if you like. I mean, you know how we artists are. Sometimes we could be some straight up hoarders. You could actually purchase the case separately if you like, and then start your own collection by picking out the markers that you actually want. So I really like that option as well. Now, I decided to do a swatch test to show you guys if the colors on the casing matches with the ink that actually comes out of the marker. I know for some people this is important, but I really don't care too much because I always have to swatch the mess out of my markers, but I'm happy to announce that most of the Everblend markers have ink that match the color on the barrels. As you can see, the Tuscan Sun has ink that's a slightly lighter yellow than the color that's on the capital marker but it isn't too much of a difference. So I'd say Arteza did a pretty good job with matching that up. I also like the name choices. They have some pretty fun names, which I know doesn't amount to anything, but I like that the markers have a little bit of personality, if you know what I'm saying. If the names are too much for you, they also have the number listed as well. So for example, if you don't want to call the yellow marker Tuscan Yellow, you could call it A949. I will say that I don't understand their numbering system, all the markers have an A in front of it, which I assume stands for Arteza, but I'm just more used to the letters indicating what color family they are in. For example, in other alcohol marker brands, 
If a marker starts with the letter R, it is usually because it is some version of red or has red tones in the ink. This doesn't really matter to me as long as each marker can be identified individually. The only thing that grinds my gears about the naming of these markers is that there's one color called hot pink and that joint is nowhere near hot pink, bro. <laughs> when I think of hot pink, I think of something very bright and saturated, almost like a highlighter. Their hot pink is almost on the purple side, but we just gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. I mean, what do you guys think? I'll leave a poll. Does this look like a hot pink to you? Or am I tripping? <laughs> Let me know. Anyways, since these markers are so saturated, I wanted to try to do something that was pretty fun and that I could use a lot of bold colors with. I did think about just doing a regular human girl, but I already know I'm going to use the mess out of their regular skin colors, browns, tans, beiges, those kind of colors. So I wanted to do something a little more bright and fun, which would mean a non-typical skin color. So in order to get away with drawing, or I guess I should say coloring, a woman in bright pink, I decided to make her an Oni girl. So that way I can get away with giving her a weird skin tone. I also decided to go ahead and see how these markers work with the fine liners that I got from Arteza. And look, y'all, <laughs> remember when I said you should always swatch things and test things? Okay, so basically, I decided to scare myself and I lined this whole drawing and then went straight in with the markers, not knowing how the markers would react with the fine liners. And yes, I did swatch the fine liners and then swatch the markers, but I didn't swatch the markers on top of the fine liners, so I had no way of knowing if these alcohol-based markers were going to make the fine liner ink bleed or anything of that sort. So I really could have screwed the pooch on this one, <laughs> if you know what I mean, but I am ecstatic to say that these two products actually work really well together. The ink does not spread or bleed or anything when you lay the Everblend markers on top of their fine liners. So I'm so happy to say that these two actually work well together because this could have been a disaster. I could have messed up all my line work. I do have to say that I do like the finished product with the colored lines it definitely makes my drawings softer but in the same breath i do miss just my thick black bold lines so i don't know i'll have to try this style out more and see if i like it better than the bold lines but for right now the black bold lines are not going anywhere so don't you fret <laughs> Let's talk about the Everblend barrels themselves. These markers are triangular shape to help prevent rolling around on your desk, which I can appreciate. I thought it would be awkward in my hand as I colored, but I was able to adapt quickly and didn't even realize it. Like most alcohol markers, the Everblend markers are double-ended. It's indicated which nib with a little picture showing either a chisel nib on one side or a bullet nib on the either. The end of the marker with the bullet nib is colored so you can tell right away that you're getting ready to use the bullet nib. You can even purchase replacement nibs. I really like the look and the feel of these markers. The only thing I don't like about these markers are that they don't seem to be refillable. Well, if you want to be honest, Every alcohol marker is sort of, kind of refillable. <laughs> it just depends on your determination. Now, let me explain myself when I say that. If you have alcohol, you can refill alcohol-based markers. It will just dilute the color a bit, but 
that's a whole nother video because <laughs> it's a process and it's doable. Sometimes it can be messy. I know I've done this many a times just to make sure I get more life out of that marker. If you want to see that video, let me know. I can make a video, but yeah, technically these alcohol based markers, these Everblend markers are not refillable, but literally every marker that's alcohol based can be refillable. <laughs> are you catching my drift? They're not packaged or labeled as refillable, but if you want to, you can get around that. So these aren't technically refillable, which is a bummer because if you use a particular color a lot, you will have to keep buying more barrels, which I feel is kind of wasteful, but what can you do? Another flaw is that you can't purchase one single marker, or at least I was having trouble finding just one single marker. So if you bought that hot pink life and you use up all the ink, you can't purchase one marker to replace it. What you can do, however, is purchase a pack of four hot pinks. <laughs> this is like a double-edged sword because if you are using hot pink all the damn time, that's probably a good indicator that you need more than one replacement. But what if you just need a specific color for a one-time piece? Now you are forced to purchase a pack of four freaking hot pinks and you only need a one for a one-time use. So... I guess it just depends on how you look at the situation. Are you a glass half full or glass half empty type of person? Also, I noticed the pack of four is $8.99, which would make this set about $2.25 a marker. So it seems it's more cost efficient to get a large set of markers. I'm assuming it's more cost effective for Arteza as well to mass produce markers, which is why they kind of force you <laughs> to buy a four pack of the same colored marker instead of just buying one marker replacement. I'm not too worried about it because I have pen pals. So when I have a double of something or a supply I'm not using anymore, I just ship it off to them so they can try it out. But that's not the case for everybody. So in the future, I would personally like to see the option to purchase one single mon. I was almost say monster because I'm looking at a monster. <laughs> but marker. Finally, let's talk about the ink itself, which I guess is like the most important part. So you can kind of say that I say the best for last. Anyways, it's very saturated and brightly colored. It's pretty juicy, just how I like it. <laughs> now, when I say juicy, I mean that the ink flows out nicely without any skipping. This will give you a smooth layer and even transitions. So for me, juicy markers are a must, but not too juicy though, because then the ink will just seep everywhere and won't stay in the lines that you have drawn. The Everblend markers are the perfect amount of juicy. They really do blend nicely with each other. Of course, with any alcohol marker, it's much easier to blend colors from the same color family say red to orange and takes a bit more work to blend different hues like pink and green together it can be done though just takes a little bit more time and effort as you saw in the beginning where i was swatching the ink on a separate piece of paper i did try to blend a light pink and a light blue together and it gave me a soft lilac color so like I said, it can be done. I'm just going through with these colored pencils to add a little more dimension into the drawing. And if you're curious about any of the supplies I used, please check the description box. There will be links. All in all, I really like these markers and was actually surprised at how well they blended and how smooth of a layer I was able to get. Now I know everyone's going to say, Oh, they're not brush markers. <laughs> I know everyone in a YouTube community basically thrives off of brush tipped alcohol based markers. But if you were an OG subscriber, you know that I always started with a bullet tip alcohol based marker 
So those are actually my Jimmy Jam. I actually prefer the bullet tip as compared to the brush nib, but to each his own. That's it for today's video though. I love you guys and I'll see you when I see you.